Hello and welcome to the show. We are back with more of your automation rally cars taking on the BMNG Drive Italian stage. Up first, a vehicle built by Melody22B. It is very purple, has some gold wheels. It's called it. I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. A Carry a Kai Concept RR Rally. 300 horsepower, all wheel drive machine. The engine is the smallest engine of the day 1.4 litre turbocharged i3. Quite a lot of power out of a fairly small engine. Does make me concerned a little bit about the turbos, possibly. It might be very big turbos, might have a lot of turbo lag going on. And the other concerning part is the tiny brakes. And they're not the smallest brakes we've ever seen, but they are pretty, pretty small. And that's not great when it comes to a rally stage. Wow, those are some short gears going on. Uh, the short gears, to an extent, are good, but there is a time when too short when third gear, well, when fourth gear is barely getting you past 45 miles an hour, I think that's a little, a little bit too short on the old gear front. The fact is we might even run out of gears. Ooh, it's all gone horribly wrong on this one. Okay, there is not, there is not much grip available here. I think it's wedged as well. Right, gears are going to be horrible, and there is apparently... Nowhere near as much grip as I would have liked from the vehicle, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, I guess we have to go to go through a lot of the gears. Yeah, we're getting into fifth at like 40 odd miles an hour. That's a little bit on the absurd side. I guess fourth is going to have to do out of these corners. All right, okay. So not only are the gears incredibly short, if you are ever so slightly in the wrong place in the rev range, you have absolutely no go. And uh, that I'm. Not so surprised about, but still, uh, that's going to be a fun one to have to deal with. Uh, we will try and thread the car neatly up to here. Uh, I'm not 100% trusting, really, of this vehicle. Oh, first, first gear is entirely useless. I'm so used to dropping almost all the vehicles down into first for that corner. Uh, the <laughs> he just goes against, it just goes against every instinct that I would normally have. Fourth gear is terrible. Yeah, the gearbox is not not helpful with this with this vehicle in the slightest, but there we go. We will try and carry some speed through here. Watch out. Say so watch out for the understeer. It's not it's not too bad, not as bad as I was initially worried about, I guess. Uh, we will chuck that around quite sideways and then run towards the finish line here. Uh, straight line speed wise. Probably not going to be the fastest, but also not the slowest, certainly. Uh, yeah, it's not quite as fast across the line as I was expecting it to be. That's got seven gears. I don't know how many, whoopsie, how many gears it will go up to. It's a 20, well, it's a 120.7. You know, could have been a worse first run. Could have been a worse first run, or second, first complete run, second attempt down the course. Um, ooh, that's taken a nasty chunk out of the front, out of the front corner. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay and just fighting a lot of things. It's a good looking car. It's got ginormous cannons at the back of it. Uh, that much is for sure, but uh, yeah. Overall, I think it is a pretty damn good looking car. Uh, it is not quite so happy. Well, I say not so quite so happy. Gearbox really doesn't, doesn't do the car any favors, but even that aside, I think we would still struggle a little bit with grip. You see, I. I'm not sure. I feel, I feel like if I put it into fourth, I'd just buzz the limiter almost immediately. Fifth is probably better through there. Uh, this might be... It's a combination of gear ratios really not working, and the engine is... You know, it's a small engine with a whacking great big turbo, and you put those two together, and it doesn't become a particularly easy vehicle to drive quickly. Might be able to get it under a 120, though, if I can get everything get everything right. That being said, nope, running out of grip there. <laughs> it's just, it's not got the grip. I'm kind of surprised. I'm kind of, it's not got small tyres, it's not got crazy large tyres, but yeah, it's just struggling to carry speed through some of these corners. Um, yeah, I think that, I say that's, that, that's kind of, that's kind of that, unfortunately. Yeah, good looking car, however, let down by not a fun gearbox. The engine might have worked, but it is still quite a, a turbo-y, quite a turbo -y engine. And that'll be for the final run across the line for the car. We will 
launch it off of the wall. Oh, I thought we'd landed it. <laughs> thought we might have got away with a landing it in the field. The answer to that, very much no. Well, I mean, we've landed it in the field, just not landed it nicely on the wheels. I guess that was a bit too much to ask for. Okay, well, that was our first contender of the day. Up next, we have got a rather interestingly winged vehicle going on here, built by Banmiro. It is the 1600RR Turbo, as that name might suggest. 1.6 litre turbocharged i4 up at the front. I mean, there's so much space going on in that engine bay. Uh, 290 horsepower in this one, all-wheel drive with plenty of aero bits going on. Tyres are, eh, I mean, about average size. Off-road compound, still fairly small brakes going on again. I don't like the small brakes. We want a bit bigger brakes than than that, I guess, ideally. Let's go and see what the car has got to offer. Well, more sensible gear ratios immediately. I like to see that. Uh, still not, say not as much grip. We were kind of spoiled a little bit last time with that van. Oh, that's way too much speed up there. I think it is safe to say it is a little faster a vehicle than our previous contender. Uh, <laughs> Got to be a lot earlier on the brakes down that section. Well, I think we're wedged again, aren't we? Well, we live and learn and all that. Stuck in a tree. It's never being dug out of that. Hmm. Okay, so, important important information. While it is a bit grippier, uh, we're going to have to be quite nice and careful with the brakes. I don't think it has ABS. Didn't think I saw it flicking ABS on. Uh, I think I was just a little bit too brave with the car coming up over this uh, over this crest. It's easily done. It's easily done on this rally stage. It is a not, it's a very, as I've said many times before, uh, but in case this is perhaps your first time watching this series, this is a horrible surface that uh, you're driving on. It's not really dirt, it's just dust, and there is no grip. It's not really dirt to require the full off-road tyres. They can work if they're wide enough. Um, it's just a difficult surface, and I'm driving cars that, well, I've never seen before. Uh, we will chuck that into the chicane. Nicely does it through there. Yeah, this is a pretty nice little car to drive, actually. It's not got the craziest, highest levels of grip ever, but it is quite nice and easy to position where you want it to. Brakes work, handbrake works. Handbrake is one of those strange things that sometimes just doesn't seem to work on some beam vehicles and power delivery is about what you want really it's there when you go to get out of the corners it's got pretty good acceleration towards the line a 17.4 for our car that's a solid time that's a, a, we've said before a sub 20 is doing okay down into the 17.4s okay it's not quite up there with the sunburst you know we're not quite into the 15s that you need to be beating the sunburst it's a couple of seconds down but still that's not a bad not a bad showing whatsoever and we have one more attempt for the for the car. Where am I going to find time? I'm not sure quite where I'm going to be finding time over that uh, over that run. That was seemed like a pretty solid run. I mean, ultimately, you've still got to be a little careful after you know, three tries through here uh, with these with these vehicles. It's very difficult to get absolutely on the limit. Some cars inspire more confidence than others, and I will say this one. Spies. It's fairly consistent, I've got to say. I might not necessarily dry it. I might not necessarily dry it consistently. I might try and push it a little harder than it can actually go in places. We've nearly had a massive crash there, for example. But it is a car that inspires a little bit of confidence uh, driving it around here. I'm not worried if it goes sideways. I'm not going to have a massive panic because it's, you know, unwieldy. It goes sideways. It's got the grip to get away with it. Uh, we will chuck it through the back chicane nicely go jump on the throttle out the other side now this is a, a nasty tightening corner very easy to get caught up in the rock face no such problems for the 1600 rr into the final hairpin we go yeah, this is just a very nice car to drive it won't be challenging the uh the, the k-van but it's just a nice pleasant sports car to drive down this rally car to drive down this stage in fact it's gone blisteringly fast on that run 16-0 nicely done within within a second of the within a second of the sunburst yeah that is just a very very nice car to drive that is just a very nice a very 
it's a comfortable vehicle to drive. Uh, you have lots of confidence in just taking it down that stage. Yeah, I really like that one. It's got, it has got absolutely tiny brakes, but they do the job. I can't say I was in fear of, you know, not getting stopped at any point down the course. Uh, power delivery is good. Yeah, that is just a fun, a fun vehicle. Up next, we have got our most powerful vehicle of the day, built by Blazer. It's called Le Rogue. Uh, 480 horsepower on this car, which is, you know, pretty good going. The biggest engine as well, and a 4.5 litre i5, which will also mean it's very noisy, because all of the uh, i5s are incredibly noisy turbocharged. This one, uh, tyres are not the off-road compound tyre. I'm not quite sure what compound it is, but it is... I believe it is the compound that's tended to be pretty good in terms of grip on the on the dust. Suspension looks different. I want to, I want to say it's kind of like a live axle going on the back, but I'm not I'm not quite sure what suspension setup it is. But it's not one that's very commonly used down here. That might be good, might not be good. Uh, I guess we will find out uh, as we unleash the car down this course. There is that huge amount of... Uh, oh, we... Ah, uh, we have ABS. I can say we aren't stopping for the first quarter, but no, that's just the ABS doing its thing. ABS on this dusty surface. You can make it work, but your car has to have some unbelievably massive brakes for it to happen. And this apparently does not. Uh, this is going to be a f another... F we've got more fun experiences... More, more fun experiences are coming up for us here, because we're going to have to be on the brakes, well, probably about here, if we want to stand a hope in hell of making it for the hairpin. Uh, good news, handbrake works a bit. Not very well, not as well as some cars, but works enough to kind of get it around a corner a little bit. This is where it's going to be fun, trying to get the car slowed down. Oh, we're just not going to stop there, are we? Oh, I was hoping I was, I was really hoping I was going to get away with that. I mean, we have kind of pinged our way, I guess clear in the end. But surprisingly, oh, we blow the radiator on it. There's a load of smoke just came out. Maybe it was just dust or something from the road. Thought a whole load of smoke came out of there. No, there is definitely, is definitely smoking. <laughs> We've definitely got the radiator in all of that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, it has the, I say the typical ABS problem. Yes, I can be aggressive under braking, I don't have to worry about the car locking up. It's very fast when it does unleash all of its speed. That is bloody rapid when it does get going. However, it's trying to use that speed constructively. I think a sub-20 is on the cards here, considering that was two crashes and we did a 24. I think a sub-20 is going to be rolling for a while as well. Um, I think a sub-20 is on the cards if we can keep it all together. It's just going to have to be a really early on the brakes into a lot of these corners. We can't we can't push the car too crazily through them. Uh, the engine is lovely, I will say that much. Uh, the engine's got plenty of go about it. I can leave it in second coming out of some of these corners, even third perhaps in places, and it will be fine. It, will, it has more than enough power and so on to get it out of these turns at different points in the rev range, which is always nice. And when you, well, I guess when you've got these bigger engines, you don't need to go as crazy with the turbo. I didn't notice this turbo's not running crazy high boost like a lot of the turbos we see. Uh, I think it's only running 8 or whatever. Or, oh, okay, that's 12, actually. So, no, it's 16, I lied. But that's a lot less than the 40-odd that we've often been seeing. I know it's a silly measurement that the default app's set to. Uh, I don't know why, but... Normally it's 41 from the turbo laggy cars, this is at 16. There's that, that's all that matters really, so it's just running less boost. Ah, I've fallen off the road like a Muppet there as well. It wasn't going particularly well either there. I'm asking too much of the vehicle because I just know it can't get... Or I, say, I know, I'm struggling massively to get it slowed down for these corners, which means we're just turning in and hoping that it's got the grip and it's not going to happen. Right. Nothing like a high-pressure run. We've got to get this one right, really. Uh, no room for errors this time around, so it'll be carefully on the brakes into the first corner. Uh, carefully on the brakes into every corner, in fact, because that's where we're going to have... It's where we're going to have the trouble. Oh, like here, for example. I mean, it hasn't got the most grip of any vehicle I've driven. It hasn't got the most grip. It's slightly more forgiving than some cars. You can just about get away with asking it a little bit of crazy stuff. Uh, no. This crazy stuff isn't happening. 
Oh. Oh, oh. That was a handbrake and hope. That's... I mean, we got through the hairpin. It's not an advisable... Not an advisable way through the hairpin in the slightest. I'm amazed that actually stuck. We'll almost clipped a rock through all of that now. This is where we got into trouble last time. Yeah, beware of the tightening corner because I struggled to shrug off the speed around there. There we go. Nicely does it. Early on the brakes. Early where well, it was early on the brakes. Uh, not early enough on the brakes into the hairpin. A little a little bit more handbrake and hope. Not quite as wasn't quite as desperate, but still ended up in a bit of bother through that corner. And there we go. Run towards the line. Unleash the fury. It's a 20.6. Couldn't quite get a, a sub. 1 minute 20. Yeah, it's, it's just very difficult to get the car slowed down for everything. Oh, have we snapped the drive shaft? It looks like we might have done. Uh, <laughs> that looks quite broken on the underside of the car there. Uh, no, the wheel's still... Spe oh, who knows? Um... Yeah, difficult to drive. The grip isn't too bad, however, trying to get it slowed down is kind of what your main main concern is. You are preoccupied with trying to make sure the damn thing will get slowed down for corners to worry about too much. A bit of a shame. Seems like quite a good engine. Uh, however, yeah, the rest of the car just couldn't quite uh, couldn't quite work. And our final vehicle today, continuing the theme of giant exhaust cannons, uh, is built by Aero Racer. This is the Aero Aura Rally Car. 289 horsepower in this all-wheel drive, a 2.2-litre turbocharged i4 up at the front. An interesting array of, I guess, supposedly rally spotlights. I think it's quite, it's... I think it's quite a good-looking car. The spotlights at the top are a bit strange. I kind of... the front kind of works-ish for me. It's a bit strange with the huge grille. I guess it's quite BMW-y, but uh, yeah, it kind of works. Uh, Tyres. We have got a different compound to the previous vehicle. Again, I think this is one that has worked quite nicely in the past. Uh, not crazy size brakes, but fairly okay sized, sized brakes. As I said, we're talking around the 300 horsepower mark. It's generally pretty good down here if the rest of the car can can deal. Well, I don't the rest of the car can deal with that 300 horsepower. We haven't got any ABS to worry about, thank God for that. Uh, well, certainly after that last experience, we struggle to get the front end to behave itself a little bit. That doesn't necessarily look like it wants to get turned in as much as I might want it to. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Again, it's not likely perhaps to be challenging the, uh, the K-Box because, I mean, the weight. The weight of that little van was so was so light. I think about 680 kilos or something, which lightness is in some ways key, it seems, with these series. <laughs> Certainly on what is a very very, that's a very technical rally stage. You never really go above a I say 100 miles an hour. I don't even know if many cars can even get to that down here. Uh, you're certainly not going much above 80 or 90 for most vehicles, so yeah, lightness is uh, fundamental. Big tyres are certainly helping in this from what we have seen. This feels pretty much like the uh, 1600 RR. This does seem like quite a nice vehicle to drive. We have got a little out of shape going into the final hairpin. Uh, handbrake is working. Always nice. Always nice when the handbrake is uh, behaving itself and doing what it actually should be able to do. Yeah, it's pretty good. Chucking it through that uh, back chicane. Not quite as fast in a straight line as some, but not bad across the line. It's 17.6 on the first run for the car. Hit the ground pretty hard on the uh, <laughs> on the escape road bit. I can't quite figure out what that is going on at the front either. They're sticking out. Kind of looks like, <laughs> looks like a GoPro mount, but I don't know why you'd have that on a car in automation. But there we have it. Right. That's a solid first run. That is a, a good, a good solid first attempt for the car. I could even hear bit of the old turbo noise, I think, going on with with the, uh, with the there's certainly an interesting sound coming from the from the car. It almost sounds like a supercharger, in fact. I don't quite know what it is that's making the sound, but never mind. It's probably something that's changed in automation slash beam and, or in the conversion. All that. I did clip the wall there. I, oh, we're going to clip the wall on the outside. That's twice I've got incredibly lucky. 
That's twice we've been incredibly lucky. Uh, the amount of times where you would do that and a bit of bodywork would get snagged. I mean, you've seen what it's like after we hit the wall after the finish line, how easy it is for a bit of car to get snagged on that sort of wall. I'm amazed not buckled a wheel or got the car caught on that rock face. Oh, I might slow down a little too much on the way in there. Got to remember, this car has got some pretty good, pretty good grip. Got a lot more confidence in this than some vehicles now. Last time we were going left into the uh, right-hander, second gear's working. Yeah, it's another engine. It's got a little bit more boost going on in this than some, but uh, it's working at most points. I'm not suffering with the terrible turbo, turbo lag. What is it going to be across the line? Oh, it is slower that time around. Okay, that's what happens if you get it. <laughs> if you do catch it, middle is in the air and slightly upside down when I caught the fence, but still, that's what can happen when things go terribly wrong. Okay, this is it. Can we get any more speed out of the vehicle? Less brushing along the rock faces would be ideal, if at all possible. Uh, chuck the car down this turn. Yeah, I mean, that there. It's not bad at all to drive. Much like I said with the 1600, it is a fun vehicle to put down this course. I'm not having to constantly fear for my life and constantly have to worry about something barely working in it. However, ultimately when you're going up against the Sunburst and some of the cars that have gone down here, this does perhaps lack a little bit of grip. It just doesn't quite get turned in. doesn't perhaps quite carry the speed. Uh, I mean, we are only talking as a small bit that it's not quite able to do it by, and it is fairly damn consistent. Again, predictable, and predictability is good. Predictability is very important in this series on such a such a difficult road with, you know, relatively small number of attempts to, to learn the cars and so on. Um, yeah, predictability is one of the key things, and I'm yeah pleased to say that this is very nice, very nice indeed to drive. But there are a couple of places where you just notice that lack of front end grip. Now. Throw it through that back chicane with as much bravery as I dare. What are we going to have time-wise? It's another very, very consistent runs for the car. I think all within a second of one another. Slightly faster on that final attempt at the 17.31. Yeah, that is a nice car. That is, is a nice a nice vehicle to drive. It has yeah, plenty plenty of that important important predictability. Not too bad getting slowed down, pretty fast accelerating, pretty good through the corners. All in all, yeah, a quick time, a quick time through the course, and much easier to drive than <laughs> some other cars we've had today. So, on to the leaderboards, and it is the 1600RR that will go fastest of the day. It goes up into 7th place, in fact. It uh, just beats the slowmobile. As I said, it is less than a second down on the sunburst. That is a very, very quick time through this course. The Aero Aura, that'll go into an 11th place. Likewise, a very quick time. The 17-3 uh, beats the crap rally car. It's turned out to be not all that terrible. Again, those are some, some seriously fast times. We have to go a little bit further down to find Le Rogue or Rouge. I'm not sure which. And that's a 28th position, just narrowly beating out the fastest of the rear-wheel drive cars. I mean, it's not a terrible time by any stretch of the imagination, but both... That vehicle and the Akairi uh, had their problems from either brakes or gearbox slash power band. Uh, that finds itself in 30th position. I took the 20.7. Yeah, they are not the worst times, you know, not worst times through this course imaginable. But uh, yeah, they just had their, had their difficulties. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.